Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys are having a great week. Um, so, uh, what I want to do today, and, and I'm not sure whether this is going to run into a second video, I don't know yet, but I've got an order for a, um, a cabin sign from a lady back east that she wants me to make her a sign. So I've got a lot of different things that I'm going to do on this sign. Some of them I'm going to put on video, some of them I'm not, but I'm going to do something brand new today that I've never done on camera before. If you guys watch very many resin videos, which Vicky has watched everyone in existence <laughs> because that's what she does. Um, when they fill knots, they, um, they mix, uh, sometimes they mix color. In fact, they're, they're, uh, anyway, there's lots of videos where they show resin filling knots. So here's my board that I laminated there together. Um, Vicky's still struggling with her ankle, so she's I'm glad you didn't just fall into the camera. <laughs> you almost did. You okay. were teetering there. Teetering. So here's the board that I made. It's get, it's basically 12 by 24. It's going to be free form shape. I'm going to do that with a jigsaw after I do my fill. But the lamination on this, uh, it's kind of uh, just a, a, a low grade of um, uh, uh, two by six redwood that I ripped them down and I put them together, glued them up. They just came out of the glue, out of the clamps. But if you want to see me actually laminate these boards up go watch video number 75 and 76 and 191 and uh, I've done several different videos on laminating these boards so I'll just give you those reference numbers have you go check but anyway so I've got a couple knots in here that this one is going to be cut out and this one's going to be cut away from my freeform shape so I'm not worried about that but these two they definitely have some, not looseness, but they've got some divots in there. And so I want to fill those. So here's the thing is um, a lot of people use the resin uh, in order to fill those. And I absolutely could do that. I've done that before. It works well. I've done it. Well, there are other people that um, for different things, they mis mix sawdust and glue. Uh, not too much for fill, but I've seen them do done it for fill and for fixing mistakes and that kind of thing. But what I've never seen done before, and there's probably videos on it and I just haven't seen them, I'm going to take my, and, and, and what I have seen on the resin is people put coffee grounds in the resin in order to mix, to, to give it a dark look for fill. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try mixing sawdust and... Um, and glue, which is nothing new, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add color to it and see if that uh, if that works. So, um, being as these are both really dark knots, I'm going to add uh, mix up my sawdust. This is just sawdust off of our sander uh, and different things. We've got another bucket of it as well, but I'm going to mix some of this um, black uh, powder that. Oh, that's Black Ninja. Ninja. This is not Ninja the actual. Black. This is not the actual diamond. It's what is it? Eye candy. Eye candy. So I'm going to mix this together in the sawdust before I put the glue in, and um, to give the sawdust a. Uh, and I, I again, maybe you guys have seen it. Maybe I just haven't seen it. But I tried this on an experiment and it actually worked really well. So I'm just going to use rather than having to mix some epoxy and all that, I'm just going to mix up some black sawdust using this powder that's made for coloring resin. I think that's what that's made for. It's I know that's what, stuff. that's what we use it so. for. And then I'm just going to throw some, some wood glue in there and uh, make kind of a, kind of a paste. A goop. And if it works out like it did earlier, it will uh, make kind of a, again, kind of a paste. Now, Andrew over at um, Reclaim, Reclaim Secrets. Secrets told us about doing this with resin right. and sawdust to fill in holes. Yeah, rather than, um, and, and that he does it all the time. With color, yeah. Yeah. He's a talented kid. That guy does some really amazing stuff. So I've just got kind of a paste there that is uh, black. But the cool thing is, you know, if you think about the possibilities, 
It could be, uh, it could be brown, you could make it red, you could make it whatever color, because you can get this, this stuff in uh, oh, I, I just, just tons of different colors. For my table. Now, one thing that I did learn uh, on, my, on my first one that I did is uh, it kind of shrunk. And you guys know that if you use, use this glue. So I want to definitely leave it really high, really tall, so that it, uh, so that it doesn't shrink down below the, the surface of the board, which I think I'm okay there. But anyway, I'm going to let that dry, then we'll come back and sand it off and see what it looks like. Um, but anyway, that's what I wanted to do first on this, uh, on this deal. Now, I've still got some in there, and I think I'll, I'll just add that to it. I'd rather have too much than, I'd rather have too much than not enough. Um, anyway, just a little tip that I, on the experiment I tried, it worked really well. Yeah, actually, I'll show it. This is a one, and the cool thing is, you don't have to wait overnight for the resin to dry. So here's one that I did, uh, right there. That was uh, actually an open crack. Now you can see it shrunk, so it went down. Uh, so I just didn't put enough, and then there's one on the other side as well. That one, oh, oh, bouncing around. That one I filled as well, but that one really shrunk down. But. Um, Anyway, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's going to work out pretty well. Just let it set for an hour or two, and then you can sand it off, and you're good to go. So any boards that you have knots in, you can fill them with, with the, um, the sawdust glue and then color it, color it whatever color you want. So anyway, just thought I'd pass that on. So the next scene, I'm going to, um, I'm going to sand these off, and then uh, I probably will do my cutting of this board. I'm just going to do it with a jigsaw, and you guys... You guys pretty much know how to do that. Um, and then we'll get into the carving. So we'll be back. All right. It is the next morning. I want to see what this stuff looks like when we sand it off. So I've got the board here. Um, the, the stuff shrunk just a little bit, but I put enough on there. I really put a gob on there. So I, it, it is definitely going to make, uh, make it, you know, to the surface. So I'm going to use my rough belt. This is my uh, 40 grit belt. And that's going to be plenty good enough to, uh, to find out what it's going to look like. So here we go. to do a little bit more fill there it looks like it it I had maybe some bubbles inside that gob maybe I didn't shove it down in there enough but um, all in all I'm really happy with that I'm I, I like it so I'll probably mix up a, just a little bit more and put in there because again even though it was built up it looks like maybe I should have shoved it down in there a little bit more or maybe I made the paste a little bit too thick honestly Maybe I should have made it a little bit thinner. I'm going to still keep playing around with it and come up with the, um, the right formulation. But basically, I think my, my experiment actually worked. So, I will do that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do on this sign is I'm going to actually cut the shape. You can see I've got a pencil line around it. I'm going to cut the shape. So, but I'm not going to do that on camera because you guys have seen me do that on camera. If you haven't seen me do that on camera... Uh, go back and check video number 79, number 156, number 232, and number 233. Um, I'm doing a rustic edge on there, so I'm going to cut that shape with uh, just either my jigsaw or, um, or actually use the sawzall. Just cut that shape and uh, use the angle grinder to do, uh, uh, do kind of a rustic edge. 
And uh, so when we come back, we'll get into the layout and the carving on this. I wanted this video to be more about layout and carving than some of this other stuff. But anyway, I'm happy with that, Phil. So we will be back and get into the layout. Hey, folks. Okay, we are back. So um, first things first, I, I want to start. I want to get the layout done on this sign. But first things first, my little experiment with the, the glue and the sawdust and the black um, powder. Um, I wasn't really that happy with it. It was okay, but I wasn't really that happy with it. Even after my second, um, that uh, my second batch, basically, that I made a little bit thinner and got in there, it still, after I sanded it off, it kind of left little holes and pits and stuff. So it could have been just the knots in this board, because when I tried it earlier on that different piece, it turned out great. So I'm not completely done with that, but what I did first. Uh, for sake of time on this one, I went ahead and and finished up the fill with the um, the star bond thick and the uh, immediate the fast accelerator stuff, which I love this stuff too. But this stuff will only go so big, kind of thing. Anyway, uh, so but I really like that stuff. So baby, if you can pan down here, we got so much going on on this sign. What I've decided to do on this one, guys is get all the letters, everything exactly where it goes, um, and then I'm gonna spray it, and I've got all kinds of different elements going on here. Um, first of all, the customer, uh, I had showed her this sign. This is a sign I made years ago, and um, it's a picture of one. She really loved everything about it. So, um, and, and this sign's gonna be all inset. So I'm trying to basically kind of match that style of sign. Um, so what I've done, uh, she wanted the bears on there. She changed her mind a few times here and there. Wanted a bear and a buck and then changed it to two bears. Um, so the one, uh, one of the, the things that I want to mention is make sure, guys, when you're talking to your customer, this is my kind of my notes that I was taking as I was um, talking to the customer. I'm covering up her name and phone number there. Um, and so I take notes, but then also when she does changes and stuff, we were emailing back and forth. And uh, make sure you keep all those emails and that you're absolutely sure on exactly what they want. So that's uh, that was another point. Um, the next point that I want to uh, point out is when you've got a freeform shape like this, it makes it really tough uh, as compared to using a rectangle board. But the one thing that I used for a reference line that worked out really well, and this is what I do, is even though I don't have a rectangle top and bottom, we're trying to get Magnum out of here. <laughs> Um, even we don't have a reference line top and bottom to measure from one thing that I do want to absolutely make sure is my lamination uh, lines um, I want everything square to those lamination lines so I've got one here and I've got one here there's three different pieces and uh, they're pretty much equal so what I do is I make a little line right where those laminations are, and then all the measurements are based off of those lines. So that's how I came up with this. Now the other, uh, another element about this sign, uh, again, everything is inset, so I've got to make sure that I take care to, to, um, to space for that. Uh, there won't be any uh, background, that way I can I can move my lettering out to the side. One of the notes that the that I took down that the customer was asking is that she wanted a little bit more space between the words. So I tried to accommodate that. Um, the other thing is that originally the, all of these letters were going to go up in between these bears, but it didn't kind of work out. Um, so, gosh, I know that there's so many more things that I want to mention on here. But I, actually, I'm going to spray this first. So I'm using the primer. And we've got a little bit of a wind blowing out here, but I don't think it's too bad. I don't think it will affect me too much, hopefully. Another thing on a board like this, I, um, oh, one other thing is I'm not, 
I'm not concerned about getting black down in those grooves because those are all going to be black anyway, just like that picture I just showed. You can talk about the grooves. Oh, yeah. I used, um, I cut the shape with the, uh, see, thank you. I, I cut the shape with the jigsaw, but I could have done it any number of ways. Could have used a scroll saw. And then I used the, the little uh, flapper disc with my grinder. By the way, this is definitely, if you're going to buy one of these, definitely get the paddle kind. Much, much safer. I had the other kind, and I took it back and, uh, and got the paddle one. Anyway, um, when you're doing the layout on these, right now I'm trying to judge how close I can get. You saw that O oh, move just slightly. So with, with this, this primer, it comes out really fast, much faster than the ink does. So on the smaller letters, you really got to be careful on that. Bigger ones, not so much. They should pretty much stay in place. Vicky's not used to that smell of that uh, that spray. I kind of, for years and years in Oatman, I kind of lived off of that. Because <laughs> I was in a plastic shed. There was actually a nice little bit of a breeze blowing right now. I hope I'm not spraying my yellow shirt black. Anyway, all right, so... You can see really light sprays when it comes to that, especially on the small stuff. Now, the other thing that I had to take, the other element that I had to take into account is this big knot down here. This is the, one of the ones that I filled. I'm hoping that it's not going to be an issue for me. Now, if these had been outset letters, I would have tried to, to lay it out to where that would be in the background. There's still a little bit more knot there and a little bit more knot there. I'm hoping that it'll hold up. It's got a lot of glue in there and, and a lot of the, um, the CA glue as well. So that is all going to be cut away because, again, these are inset letters. But if that had been outset letters, I would have tried to work around that, maybe even flip the board upside down to where that would end up uh, in, a, in an outset, uh, you know, taken out with background or above or below, but being as this was the way it was, that ended up being right where that letter is, so I think it's going to turn out okay. Um, what other? The other thing is she wanted two little dots above the U. Uh, what the, it's kind of like a German thing. That says house, and, I, and that has nothing to do with their last name, even though her last name starts with a K, I think. Um, it just happens to be they're in kind of a Bavarian type of area, I guess, where their cabin is. So she wanted to play on words, the cool house. So that is pretty much it. Now I'll draw lines top and bottom like you guys know that I do. Uh, if you have any questions on that, um, it, the reason I do it is because I want, when I go to carve, I want all the tops and bottoms of my letters to be basically straight when you look down the board. So I will do that. Again, guys, I don't know if this is going to go into a, uh, a second video, but I do want to get plenty of carving on this video before we go to a new video. These are going to be inset as well. Oh, there's another element. If you look real close here on this bear, there's almost kind of like a defect in the board. Like, um, I don't know, maybe it was crushed when it was, uh, when it was a big, thick uh, plank. And there's kind of a defect in the board. I noticed that when I was setting my bears up. Since this is going to be inset, it's all going to be cut away, so it won't be a problem. Um, let's see, what else? Gosh, I think that is about it right now. I don't want to forget my... My period there, got my dots there. All right, guys, we'll come back on the next scene and we'll get to cutting some of this stuff. All right, folks, let's get to carving. So first thing I wanna do is, is take care of this A. That's the thing that makes me the most nervous on this board. So I'm gonna take care of that A. I am using my profile bit. I don't know if you can get a view of that. Just my standard profile bit. And I wanna, uh, I'm carving this inset. So here we go.
Hey guys, all right. Well, you get an idea what I'm doing on these letters here. I'm gonna finish these last three up off camera. We're gonna shut this, uh, this video is going way long. So I'm gonna come back on Monday's video and I'm gonna do these small letters and these bears and we'll finish this thing up completely on Monday, including the finishing and the whole deal. So um, thanks again for watching, we love you all. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure and email me, eric at makeawoodsign.com, and I will get back to you right away. If by a chance you do email me and I don't respond to you within a day, then something happened because I really try and stay on top of that. So um, resend it. If you haven't heard from me in a couple days, definitely resend it. Uh, if you send messages through Facebook, I might see it, I might not. Instagram, I'm pretty good at if you send me a message through there. But anyway. My email is definitely the best. Um, we're on Instagram, Make a Wood Sign. Uh, gosh, I guess that is about it. Thanks again, guys. We appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love for you to subscribe. Click that little bell icon and you'll get notification when we do new videos three times a week. Anyway, guys, have a great weekend and we will see you guys on Monday. We'll get this finished up. Bye-bye.